Hello friends, this is Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some watercoloring and we're going to be watercoloring with pencils. Now I've never used watercolor pencils before, but there are three new sets that are out today and scrapbook.com happened to send me them. So we're going to do an opening and then I'm going to swatch them out and paint these flowers. I have the three new Tim Holtz Distress watercolor pencils. Now there's, these are set four, five, and six. On the back of the tins, you're gonna find the palette um, that is inside the tin. And if you're familiar with the Distressed ink line, you're gonna really be happy with these colors. So let's take a quick look at one. Now these pencils are woodless, so it's just all pigment. It does have paper wrapped around it, um, so you know what color it is, the name. And you can sharpen these pencils in a pencil sharpener, you just need to have a wider opening um, because they are, these pencils are a little wider than um, a standard pencil. Now I'm going to swatch a set on screen and I'm gonna be using scrapbook.com's mixed media paper. This is a heavyweight paper with a really smooth surface. Now I've already drawn a swatch and wrote the names down for each pencil and I'm going to color a little bit in each rectangle just to get some pigment down and I'm going to speed this up pretty quickly because I'm just coloring here. I'm not really, I'm not doing anything special, but I wanted you to see the colors and I'm swatching set four. So I wanted you to see the colors just without the water and how easy they work on this mixed media paper. Now, when I was coloring here, I don't know if I was using too much pressure. Um, I did get some like flakes off of the pencils. So I did have to clean up my work area pretty well to make sure I had all that pigment picked up. Now it's time to get the pigment moving. So I'm using my round size eight silver brush to bring that pigment down. I made sure my brush had a good amount of water in it so I could activate the pigment and draw it down. Now this is the first time, like I said before, this is the first time for me using watercolor pencils using this product. So I was just, I was getting acquainted to it. I was trying to see how does it work on this paper? How does it work with my paintbrush? How much water do I need to use to work with it? Um, so I ended up swatching all of the sets on this mixed media paper and then I did some watercoloring on watercolor paper. When I do my swatches, I like to swatch um, half of them with another layer of pigment just so I can see how it layers on top of its, itself. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm doing the same, oh my daughter, I just saw my daughter's hand. She did, she wanted to use one of the tins while I was painting. Um, but I'm bringing that second layer down just like I did with the first layer. And you see it does sit really nicely, makes the color a bit bolder. I grabbed a second brush and I'm using that to finish off this swatch. It's another synthetic brush. It's just a, a little stiffer than my silver brush. And I wanted to see if that would help me get the lines out. I had some problems with a couple of these colors getting the lines to smooth out. Now I'm done with this swatch and we're gonna take a look at all three swatches. I'm gonna start with set five. Now this set has some beautiful colors in it, but it has my favorite distress color, Uncharted Mariner. That's my favorite color in all of the distress rainbow. And I was super excited for that, especially for watercoloring. And I'm gonna show you why in a little bit. But this um, set six is actually my favorite set out of the three of them. And that is what I'm gonna mostly use um, in the coloring project. And then this of course is the set we just swatched. Now I'm going to stamp a flower to paint. This is Pink Fresh Studios Magnolia stamp. It's one stamp and I'm gonna get several images, which is awesome because it's gonna make this very short and sweet. And I'm just gonna do this really quickly because I wanna focus more on the coloring. I did use Versify Nocturne, Versify and Claire Nocturne ink to stamp the image onto, um, this is Arches 300 pound, cold press watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton paper. 
and it does have a pretty bumpy surface. So I did have to stamp this image three times and I stamped it one time with Versamark ink so I can clear heat emboss it. And I wanted to heat emboss it because I wanted the image to stay really dark, really black. And I wasn't sure if the pencils um, were opaque, if they had a white pigment in them uh, into where it was going to kind of fade the black out. I really didn't know what I was getting myself into with the pencils. So just thought I'll just clear heat emboss it. The lines will stay black and we'll see what the what the pencils do. Again, I'm coloring with set six and I'm starting with sponge sugar. I am gonna speed this part up because I am just coloring. I'm just adding the color onto the paper. I'm not using a lot of pressure either because this paper is really bumpy and I didn't want there to be a lot of flakes coming off of the pencil. So just doing a really nice soft layer on um, all over each petal. I'm not really worried about the pet the flowers becoming too dark because this pink is so light. Now where I do want the dark colors to be, I am laying down just a slight amount of lumberjack plaid. Now this pencil was the most pigmented pencils out of all the swatches I did. So I, I knew to be really light handed with this color. It's beautiful. It's a really cool toned red and uh, it just blended out beautifully with the sponge sugar. I'm going to add the lumberjack plaid to the rest of the flowers. Then we are going to move on to the leaves. There's two greens in the set six, forest moss and bundled sage. So forest moss is the darker one. Uh, I colored all of the leaves with bundled sage and then I'm adding a little bit of forest moss in the middle of the leaves. Now I'm going to open up the pigments, blend the pigments out with water. For the flowers, I am going to start with start at the top where the lightest color is and bring that pigment down into the red, activate the red and kind of swoop the, the red up a little bit, bringing it up a little bit into the petal. And you see I'm using my brush. If I have too much pigment down, I can use my brush to pick the pigment up and clean my uh, brush tip off on the towel. I am using a smaller brush this time also. I am using another silver brush. This one is a size four. I wanted a smaller tip so I had more control of what the pigment was going to do. So and that's why I keep kind of picking the pigment up because I'm still, you know, trying to figure out, now I'm working on new paper. I didn't swatch this paper. So now I'm trying to figure out how does this work on the cold press paper compared to the really smooth paper. I will say my first observation when I started painting on the uh, watercolor pencil on the pigment is that there was no lines at all to where there were a lot of lines on the mixed media paper. Now I used a lot more pressure on the mixed media paper. So I think those lines were kind of my fault because I just put a lot of pigment down. I was just coloring really hard like I do with crayons sometimes. So that is probably why I couldn't get the lines out, but I colored a lot softer on the Arches cold press paper because it was so bumpy. And I think that soft pressure just really did not put any lines on the uh, watercolor paper and these pigments just blended out smoothly as you can see. Even though I put the lightest amount of lumberjack plaid as I could on the flower, there's, it still made a lot of um, color for me to be able to work with and add the shading uh, to the parts of the flowers. I think that turned out so pretty. Now with the leaves, the bundle sage and forest moss, I didn't blend them out nicely. So it just turned into one color. So this is this is a, a hybrid color. Um, there is a die that die cuts all the pieces. So I ran that through my die cut machine and now I'm gonna play with some distress ink. On the back of the packaging, it says layer with distress ink, oxide, sprays, or paint for more possibilities. And since ink smushing is one of my most favorite things to do in my craft room, I thought I would ink smush some colors into the petals and into the leaves. So for the petals, I'm using um, dried marigold and saltwater taffy. And I use 
Distress Ink. I normally play with Distress Oxide inks, but I have been on a Distress Ink kick lately. I am loving them. So I thought the Marigold, the Dried Marigold, would be just a really fun way to add some orange to the flowers. For the leaves, I picked Mowed Lawn and Peacock Feathers. The peacock feathers just brought in a really pretty blue, which I ended up playing off of when I paint these images again. I am going to repaint them because I wanted a lot more depth to them. So I'm going to make sure that the leaves and petals are dried. I did a quick arrangement on a panel. And before I attach them to a panel, I want to ink smush it. Well, might as well. I have my acetate out in all of my cubes. So I picked vintage photo and dried marigold to make an ink smushed background for the um, flowers to sit on. And for my sentiment, I am using this thanks from Spellbinders Yana's layered script sentiments. I did add adhesive to the back of the paper before I die cut it so it was easy to put on the watercolor paper. Now it's time to really color these flowers and put a lot of depth into them. I originally thought I was done, but once I did my bouquet, I realized, no, I still have a few layers to go. So I started with lumberjack plaid. Now, I my hopes and dreams were just to stick to this one palette, if I can do it with this one palette, but... I really wanted to use the Uncharted Mariner. I had to use it, so I did pull that out of its tin and also brought in um, Scorched Timber, which was released a couple weeks ago, and that's in its own package. So I used those two colors and the Lumberjack Plaid for the rest of this video. And I'm also just holding the pencil in my hand and taking the pigment right off of the pencil and putting it straight onto the flower. Now, if I was watercoloring out of my watercolor palette, I would not be coloring from my pan right to the project. I always stop and drop my brush onto a palette and get some of the pigment off. But with the pencils, I was able to just color straight from the pencil onto the flower. I'm still using the number four round brush, the silver brush, and this pointy edge was so perfect to get this pigment down, especially in the smaller areas, because the closer I get to the back of each petal, the darker I'm gonna want the color to be. So I'm gonna start putting down um, some pretty concentrated paint and the small tip, the narrow tip made that really easy. I am now using scorched timber and I'm putting that right over the red um, and because I am putting uh, water on the pigment I just laid down. The paper is not fully dry, but I'm not using a lot of water in the brush, so it wasn't really wet either. But having that kind of damp paper and putting a second pigment on top of the lumberjack, the colors kind of meld together. And they did some really fun things. Like there's a lot of, um, when you look closely at the flower, you can see brown and red and orange and the uncharted mirror that I'm going to use in a second. So uh, I liked I liked how playful the colors were. And since these colors mix so well together, I did decide to chance it and bring in the third color, Uncharted Mariner. And I was a little worried if this was going to just really muddy up the flower uh, because I was putting too many pigments together and they were just going to just turn into a weird neutral color. <laughs> Luckily, that did not happen. Um, I love using dark blues, navy blues, indigo for my darker areas when I'm coloring, especially when I'm coloring with markers, I usually go and hit the darkest spots with an indigo colored pencil and it just really makes the image pop. So that blue worked um, so well on top of the brown and the red and it's really going to make these flowers and the leaves pop. So I'm gonna let you just uh, watch me finish this project, finish my coloring, and I will be back shortly to finish the video.
I'm almost done with the painting. I just wanted to come back and give you some thoughts. I had a lot of fun um, mixing these colors together. I thought it was really cool. I can color straight from the pencil. And I'm actually really excited to use these pencils with my daughter. She wants the watercolor so bad, but she, she uh, contaminates my water pans. <laughs> so I think these are going to be really great for our, our watercoloring sessions. So that finishes today's video. Now I would love to hear from you. Is this something you see yourself doing or do you already have watercolor pencils? Uh, I would love to know. I would love to know what people think about watercolor pencils. This is gonna be a medium I think I'm going to uh, be digging deeper into. <laughs> So that is all that I have for today. I will have all of the products that I used a link down in the description. They are affiliate links. If you shop them, I do get a small commission and that truly helps out this channel. So I appreciate your support and I will be back shortly with another video. So I will see you then. Take care.